First degree equations. First, let's figure out if we understand, or at least discuss the difference between an equation and an expression. So it's really simple, but we just need to make sure we talk about it for a couple seconds. Uh, 3x plus 2, equation or expression. Uh, 4x plus 5 equals 2x minus 7, expression or equation. So uh, bottom line is this is an expression. Well, I shouldn't cross it out because it's not like it's bad. It's just that this is an expression and this is an equation. Why is this an equation? Simple. It has an equal sign. Why is this an expression? There is no equal sign. So it's really that simple. Um, so now that we've covered that, let's just move on to other stuff. We're specifically going to be talking about first degree equations in this class, or at least in this section. Um, here are some equations for you to consider. And 2x squared equals 5x plus 6. How about this one? x plus 2. Square root of the quantity x plus 2 equals 4. Which of these are ref are uh, first, first degree equations? Which of those are first degree equations? So what does it mean for something to be a first degree equation? So we're really talking about where an exponent, uh, an exponent is equal to 1. The exponent on the variable is equal to 1. So how do we know that exponents are equal to 1? Let's talk about um, what a power is. So a power is where you have some base raised to some exponent and this whole thing is referred to as a power. This, I use the letter B because that is referred to as the base and this is referred to as the exponent. So if the exponent must be 1, well, none of these variables have an exponent of 1, so what? Well, we are, as I've said numerous times in my past life, we are lazy mathematicians. We don't want to sit there and write the 1 every time that the exponent is on a variable is 1. So we omit it. It's assumed to be 1 unless we write it otherwise. So this is a first degree equation. This is a first degree equation. This first degree equation. This you would think, hey, there's a first degree. Oh, nope. That right there is making this a second degree equation. And this is making it not a first degree equation. We'll go won't we'll go into detail on that. Okay? So now let's think about this equation. 5x, let's write that a little better. 5x minus 3 equals 12. Okay, what are we allowed to do in order to, quote, solve this equation? What are we allowed to do? What are we not allowed to do? Let's review. We can add and subtract values from both sides of the equation. So if I subtract 55 from here, I must also subtract 55 from here. Why? If I had this as my equation, yes, of course, we know 7 equals 7. But if I add 55 to that, oh my goodness, why did I choose 55? So that's going to be 62 equals 62, because we need to add 55 to both sides. And if we didn't do that, we would get 62 equals 7, which we know is not true. So in order for these to be true, the equation to stay true or remain a true statement, we need to add or subtract, same difference, the same value from both sides. And the same goes for um, multiplication and division. So we can also multiply and divide uh, a, the, both sides of the equation or each side of the equation by a value. Okay, so uh, for instance, let's, let's just do this guy. Uh, uh, 5x minus 3 equals 12. What would we want to do in order to, quote, get x by itself or solve for the value or determine the value of this variable that would make this statement true. 
Um, I believe I would add three to both sides. And why do I add three to both sides? I want this to go away. I want it to be zero. So what do I have to do? What do I have to add to negative three to make it zero? I have to add three. So that'll leave me with. Oops, that's. 5x equals 12 plus 3 is 15. Now, going to this part, multiply and divide, I can, I want, when I'm done, I want x to have a coefficient or the number in front of it to be a 1. So, in order for that to be a 1, what would I have to do with this number? Well, I think of it, if I want 5 to be a 1, I divide it by 5 and it'll be equal to 1. So, if I If I divide this by 5, I must also divide the other side by 5, and I get x equals 15 divided by 5 is 3. And for the most part, I'm not aware of any situation in this course where you can't check, but you should always check. Maybe not this guy, but you should really think about checking your solutions to everything. Uh, if I put 3 back in for, this val for that variable x, I get 5 times 3 is 15, minus 3 is 12. And so it works. Okay, let's talk about um, this guy. Two z minus three z minus four equals two times the quantity z minus three. Um, a whole bunch of stuff here, but of course we're trying to review this quickly. What, um, keeping in mind, I can add and subtract a value from both sides, or multiply and divide. Um, by the way, us math people think of, at least I do, and folks that I speak to, addition and subtraction being the same thing and multiplication and division being the same thing. Um, so what, can, what do we want to do first? Uh, so let's think about this. I think I want to, to take care of parentheses and review-wise, that's the distributive property. So I'm not going to do anything with the 2z. So 2z is going to be out there, and I'm going to multiply this negative 3 by everything inside here, because I'm going to end up having minus 3 of those guys and minus 3 of those guys. Why? Because I'm subtracting 3 times the amount of those. So I'm going to have minus 3z and a negative plus, or excuse me, negative times negative is plus 12. And I'll do the same sort of thing over here, where 2 gets multiplied times z, so I get 2z, and that's going to be 2 times negative 3, which is minus 6. Okay? So what do I want to do now? Uh, let's change this to this purple. I don't know how this is going to look. Um, combine like terms. So I'm going to combine those two. This one's over here by itself, so I'm going to leave it alone for now. Uh, if you wanted to combine a bunch of steps, that's depending on your, dependent on your proficiency. So 2z minus 3z is negative z. That purple doesn't show up very well, does it? Uh, we'll stick with it for this line. Two, uh, negative z plus 12. Plus 12 equals 2z minus 6. Okay. Uh, maybe in a former life you thought of this as, or your teacher talked to you about this being uh, an equation with the variable on both sides. So I, I also think of what we do generally is we take more complex things and we make them into things we understand a little better. So this we've gotten down to uh, multi-step equation with variable on both sides. So I want to get all the z's on the same side, or if you want to think about it, I do not want this z over here. Or you could say the same, the same thing about the other one over here, but I'm going to choose this one because of the negative sign. I don't want this here. How do I make that into a zero? If I make that... To make that into a zero, I'm going to have to add z. So I add z to both sides. This becomes zero. I'm left with 12 equals add z to both sides. That's going to be 3z minus 6. Uh, I don't want this here anymore. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides because that'll make that into zero. I get 3z equals, what, 18. And then now we get some division going on. Let's try this blue. Divide both sides by 3, and I get z equals 6. Should check. Okay. So, that was that guy. 
All right. So let's actually let's scroll back down here. So what in fact is a solution? Why is this a solution to that equation? Why is that a solution? Um, simply put, uh, this is a solution because it is a value or uh, sometimes it's a set of values that will make the statement, the original statement, true. So the original statement was this, okay? So what values for z will make the original statement true? The only one in this case that makes the statement true is when z is equal to 6. There'll be situations where we'll get multiple answers and or multiple values that'll, and or a set of values that'll make the statement true. So that's what we mean when we're asking for a solution. Um, what values or a set of values will, make, will maintain that original statement as true? So let's try this guy. 4 over 3 times k plus 2 minus k over 3 times k plus 2 equals 5 over 3. So for this example, we want to think about um, what I believe maybe your teachers we referred to it at referred to this kind of method as clearing fractions. If I can find a value that if I multiply each of these items, each of these terms, by the same value, that the denominators will become 1. What will that do for us? It'll get rid of all the fractions, because sometimes fractions are more complex to deal with. Um, sometimes we can't clear them, and that's OK. But in this case, we can. What's a, what's a value that we can, or an expression that we can use to multiply each of these terms by such that the denominators go to 1? And I would say that I'm multiplying everything by 3 times k plus 2. And if you don't get it straight away, like if you multiplied everything by k plus 2, that's fine. You'll, be, you'll end up with 3's in the denominator. Uh, and then you can just multiply everything by 3 and break it up into multiple steps. All right? So this, this divided by that equals 1 times 4 is 4. This, times, or this divided by that times k is equal to k. And this divided by 3 is just k plus 2, but then I have to multiply it times the 5, so I'm going to get 5 times k plus 2. And so what do we do from here? Uh, I'm going to distribute. So I'm going to get 4 minus k equals 5k plus 10. And then I'm going to add k to both sides. 4 equals 6k plus 10. Subtract 10 from both sides, I get negative 6 equals 6k, and I get k is equal to negative 1. All right. I know that was quick, but again, we're reviewing, and this thing's already too long. How about this guy? That's a 2, I think. Uh, let's say that we want to... Then I want to solve for x. So in other words, I'm going to get x all by itself and everything else on the other side. So uh, there's a whole bunch of slew, there's a whole slew of things we can do. What would you like to do? Personally, I would think I want to get this, and this all to be zeros over here. You could work it the other way and leave them over here, but I'm going to move them to the right if you want to think of it that way. I don't so much, but so I'm going to add 15a, and I'm going to subtract 4b. If this is going too fast, you're going to have to hit pause. Um, add 15, so I'm going to have 4x. I'm going to add 15a to both sides. That means this will go to 0, and I'll have the 15a over here. And I'm going to subtract 4b from both sides. This will go to 0, and I'll have the four, negative 4b over here. And then I still have this minus 2. And then I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides, so I can get all the x's on one side. So I'm going to get 3ax minus 4x equals 15a minus 4b minus 2. And then I'm going to do this thing that you can think of as backwards distribution, but it's factoring. I can't add these two or subtract them in this particular case. Okay, So I'm stuck with this, but I don't want that. I want x to equal some stuff. All right. 
So if I want x to equal some stuff, what I can do is note that there's an x in this term and there's an x in this term. And I can divide those out of each of those terms. Or what's the opposite of distribution is factoring. So if I factor an x out of that, what would be left a 3a? And if I factor the x out of this term, what would be left a negative 4? And you can think of it as or check it or you know as a thought exercise if I distributed the x back in here would I get the same expression that's up here so I'd get 3ax minus 4x All right. so on the other side of the equation I did not do anything so I still have that and then I'm going to divide both sides by 3a minus 4 3a minus 4 and so my final solution that would for the, a value of x that will make this statement true or maintain its truth and I get that yes you can check that you can put that in for x in these two locations and do a bunch of algebra uh, and check it and you probably should hit pause and do it now but um, it's it's uh, more complicated than your traditional <laughs>